Okay, are we ready? Ready. Yeah. We are rolling. Mike's hot. All yes. right. Ready to go. I'm ready. We're ready. I'm so excited to have you guys today. Yeah, thank you for having us. I have been doing a little research, like looking up the lore. And okay. you guys have been on YouTube for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I was like looking up your podcast description and this cracked me up. Oh, we haven't oh, no. changed it since we Oh, put no, it. please. Oh, is that is this sort of like one that we have for our show? It's the IMBD one. I don't think you guys oh, did it. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Zane and Heath Unfiltered, a weekly podcast from YouTube sensations, Zane and Heath, two uneducated Florida boys with strong opinions and nothing to back it up. Do we have strong opinions? I don't know. <laughs> well, we definitely don't have anything to back it up. Yeah, so. and we, and <laughs> Did you guys write that or is that IMBD like giving us a synopsis? No, uh, somebody that we know wrote that a long time yeah, ago. When we, somebody uh, that worked, like, worked for the uh, show, our friend, we just didn't know what to say. So yeah. we just tried to make it as like, Mm -hmm. I kind of like shocking it. shocking as possible. Yeah. We didn't want to be held accountable for anything we said. So we thought that mm. would that would protect us. Yeah. And it, it hasn't. No. Yeah. I don't no. think, I don't think most people don't even know what that, what, what that, that, that intro exists. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, a lot really of things like we it. say aren't factual. So we just don't want to be held to that standard. But I he, should start just, saying that about this show. Like they're all opinions, but we should definitely just like, just we don't need an intro. If they want to know who we are, they can listen to an episode. Yeah. Yeah, give, us, give us an hour and a half of your time and you'll find out. Yeah, after we're done, we should just delete that whole. Yeah, thanks no, for bringing that up. So we'll get rid of it. <laughs> I loved it. It's what sold me. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, this, <laughs> this sounds fun. And then I listened to an episode and like, you guys are just like, you just want to have a good time. Like, yeah. That's the vibe I get. Like we talked, um, oh, well, not we, but you guys talked about like the little cereal cup bowl thing mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. someone, are you a TikTok shopper? He, he's addicted. Oh. I'm not addicted to TikTok shop. I've bought maybe like three, four things as since it's all started, like the whole TikTok shop. I'm really bad. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ever admits to addiction. I'm really bad with it. And it's it's just too easy. Mm -hmm. So I need I need the link for the cereal cup you were talking about. Absolutely, yeah. It sounded really or, good. Or you know, TikTok is so easy. You just type in cereal cup and it'll be the first thing on cereal the top. Cereal cup. TikTok shop. Do you, and do you guys always it buy it through the link that you found it on? Like the the No. Uh, yeah. I, I don't go find it on either. Amazon myself. You don't you don't want to give them the, the referral? I don't want to give them that it's, coupon or whatever they, it is. Okay. If they give a good if they give a good review, if it's someone, then yeah. I'll help them out. But if it's right. some bullshit ass, like the flosser ones, the kids mm. like, look, this works, and he spit out a bunch of dirt. And it wasn't a joke. I was uh, like, okay, I, I actually need a flosser, but I'm not going to buy through his line because no. he's obviously lying. I will say I am very upset because I used to go to TikTok all the time to like look up genuine reviews of products. Mm -hmm. And it used to be people just doing it for, you know, the sake of talking about the product and you would get like an honest review. Yeah. And now anytime I do it, it's just like people getting paid on the side from like referral codes or whatever. And I just don't trust it. Very convoluted now. You have to go back to YouTube for those reviews now. Yep. Yeah. But I am a, uh, OG. I'm an avid Amazon purchaser. That's where my my money goes. I love that. Okay. Well, let's get into this theme today. Just trying to have a good time. Yeah. She is chill. I love how soft spoken you are. Oh, yes. Very pleasing to the ear. Okay. Yeah. Good. Our voices are on. not. So sorry for everybody listening. No. Apologies. You have that. beautiful voices. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. I'm going to try headphones. Oh, I want to hear her voice, especially during the reading. Yeah, that, a, I feel like today a, we are a, going to be going over a couple topics. Hear it through the viewers. They're like flippable. All right, I'm strapped in. Okay, so this first one, it's coming from our very own Two Hot Takes subreddit three days old, titled, I accidentally got into bed with my father-in-law. Hot. My father-in-law is staying with us for a few days. We gave him our room while he's here. It's bigger, and we just felt it's the right thing to do. Last night, he went to bed, and my wife and I were downstairs watching TV and drinking. She went up a while later, too, and I said I'd be up soon. I was getting pretty tipsy at this point. As I went upstairs, sleepiness and my tipsy state meant I forgot that my father-in-law was in our room. I entered the room and got naked, which is how I sleep. I saw a figure curled up in bed and got next to it, wrapping my arms around what I thought was my wife to see if she was up for sex. He's a light sleeper and turned around immediately, saying, quote, Chris, oh my fucking God. I jumped out and fell to the floor. 
It was dark, and for some reason, I decided to get dressed there rather than just run to the guest room where my wife was. I stumbled over my clothes and somehow got them back on. By the time he got the table lamp on and was just looking at me with a what-the-fuck expression. I said sorry and went to my wife. I didn't wake her up. I just got up this morning and I'm typing this in bed with a massive hangover and a father-in-law who I tried to spoon, probably talking shit about me to my wife downstairs. I have to go downstairs at some point. Any idea what to do or how to address it? Before we continue, I'm, I was so confused by the story because I thought I was hearing it from the girl's perspective, but it sounds like I'm hearing it's from the, the guys. Mm -hmm. It's the husband. So he got into bed with, with uh, the father-in-law. Yeah. A guy. Yep. I feel like you can at least you can smell that it's not, not your wife. A, that not your wife. Yeah, it's it's so. <laughs> I think you can easily like if I'm climbing into bed, it I can smell if it's either you or my wife. Like like that. I, mean, I don't even have to get into bed. You got enough wine in you with my back turned oh, show a little shoulder. You might not catch it. Yeah, but you know the hairs and shit. I, I would I, I would oh. kind of I would kind of see it. You know, but I would, it's dark in there. It's it was pitch black by the sounds of it. Wine drunk, right? The damage is done. No mention of the type um, of liquor. Just pretty tipsy. Mm. Um, you said the damage. Do you think? Do you think it's over for everybody? Irrecoverable. <laughs> you think so? Uh, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> divorce. Uh, um, yeah, that's the end of the road right there. Uh, no, um, a genuine advice. I really would have no idea what to do in this situation. It's kind of one of those things you don't know until you're in it. Luckily, it's not like super, super horrible. I mean, I would feel more uncomfortable if it was the mother-in-law. Yeah. Um, so he got lucky on that. He did. Genuine, honest mistake. You know, I, I won't say it happens because it doesn't. But I mean, it, it also depends on how aggressive he was with making the moves. You know, I mean. That does matter. Spooned up. If you're reaching around trying to. Cup I mean, you wake up to that. That's yeah. that's pretty startling. Well, also, like, what if he went in there with a boner and then the guy felt it on his that's back? Another thing. That's, that's assault. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> that's assault that's yeah. the context we need in this uh -huh. i feel like you got to play it off and just be like hey hey john really sorry about last night i i guess this is why we shouldn't give you our room Ugh. yeah guest bedroom next time buddy mm. I, and i think it all depends on the person too mm -hmm. the person that like climbed into bed like what type of person is he is yeah, he yeah. is he always doing this type of shit is yeah. this going to be a risk in the future does he have a history of disloyalty you know snake, what i mean I, mm. I think it all depends on the type of person like i feel like if that happened to me i think very quickly i would have we would all been able to get over it mm. we would have laughed about it haha ha, and then that's it yeah my dad would have been that way too like my dad has such a crude sexual sense of humor he would have just rolled over and been like you want, <laughs> what what you want to kiss like he would have like yeah. fucked with my fiance in a in a way and so it, I don't think this is that big of a deal, depending on yeah. who they are. Yeah, just crack a joke. It's kind of harmless. If you it gotta was, laugh about yeah, it. Mother-in-law, I think, a little bit more serious, and I don't think the husband would have been very happy about that at all. It would have taken him a little bit of time to get over that, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Top comment, walk into the room, kiss your wife, and ask if he wants a morning kiss too after last night. It's a good way to joke it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to go in lighthearted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't be too embarrassed, you know, stuff but if, happens. But if you're keeping it silent, mm. especially the first 10 minutes of seeing each other, what's really going on? Mm. It's going to seem like it was a, he was making an advance on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to play it off. Yeah. Otherwise it doesn't seem like the accident it was. In any situation like that, to any situation like that, where you think it's someone else, immediately you got to tell everybody around you. Have you ever done something wife. similar? No, I've never. No. No? No, not at all. Oh, no, I have. I have. I have. With um, uh, David Alvarez. Oh, this is pretty. Okay, funny. so we were we were at a, a birthday party and we were at a venue that was very. It's just very dark. I'm also drunk, and I thought I was kissing another girl, not my girlfriend, just another girl. Okay. And mm, ended up being my friend's girlfriend. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Did he care? Well, I immediately apologized as soon as I saw it wasn't her. Okay, I freaked out immediately. Apologized, but he's a type. He definitely laughed a lot. He he didn't. He was like Zane, you're an idiot. Okay, yeah. But yeah, I think he brings that up at least once a month. Yeah, for sure. Really? I think yeah. that means it cuts deep. Mm, he yeah. played it when off. you overly joke about it. You oh, yeah. bring it up. I don't know, sensing a little jealousy, you know. 
Something's up with it. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely he's definitely a little hurt. Maybe maybe she talks about that kiss. Maybe. Oof. Mm. I don't know. We should all, we should get us in a podcast and we should talk about it. Yeah, they should. Because we have not should, talked about that publicly yet. They should open up about that. Yeah. There we go. Mm. Now you got Am I the problem? <gasps> you might be. I mean, you're the one that did it. You can write in on our subreddit. Okay. okay. Oh, like, oh, it'd be like anonymous? You, yeah. should, you should make that entry. Yeah, you okay, can yeah, give it a shot. That. Okay, moving along to the next one. You recently got engaged, Heath, didn't I you? I did. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We have a lot. It's like wedding season and engagement yeah. season mm -hmm. right now. So we've got a lot of those today. But this next one, her fiance is a little, a little odd. It's coming from Two Hot Takes subreddit titled, My fiance is upset with me over how I rejected another man during a night out. Mm, mm -hmm. How she rejected him. Okay. My fiance and I are both in our 30s. We've been together for four years, getting married in a few months. I totally adore him, and I think we have a good relationship overall. We go out a lot because we both love music. We have a great community of friends, and we see them pretty often at shows. We were at a show last night, and I was standing with a girlfriend while my fiance was outside with a few guys. For context, I was very much a weird girl in high school, but from my mid-20s on, I'd say I'm pretty conventionally attractive. On an average night out to hear music, I generally get approached or hear passing comments from men three to five times. Frankly, I'm 33, and it's not something I find very fun or enjoyable anymore. When men are polite about it, I am too, and polite dudes usually take my gentle rejection well and so that's not an issue, usually. However, that was not the case last night. A guy approached my friend and pointed at me saying something I couldn't hear. My friend shakes her head at him and says, no. He seemingly, not willing to take the hint, comes over to me and says, quote, my friend wants your autograph and points to a guy over by the bar. I laugh because what the fuck? I said, what? And he repeated himself. My friend wants your autograph because you're very pretty. I said, no thanks, I'm good. He asked a third time. My internal polite response clock had run out. I said, okay, $60 cash or cash app. He looks surprised and then sort of laughs and says, how about we buy you a drink? And I said, hmm, price just went up to $100. You still want it? And he shook his head and went back to his friend at the bar. My girlfriend and I had a laugh about what a totally bizarre way to hit on someone that was. And that was that. Later in the night, when we were all together again after the show, my friend told everyone the story. My fiancé got really quiet and was kind of standoffish the rest of the night. When we got home, he asked why I hadn't told him about that interaction. Honestly, he has gotten a bit insecure in the past about these things, and we had specifically agreed I would avoid telling him about dudes hitting on me. So I reminded him of that. He was still really quiet and sulky, and eventually I asked him what was going on. He said he didn't like how I handled it. He said it sounded like I was flirting and egging the guy on with my responses. Long story short, we argued about it. We do not see eye to eye on it, and things still kind of feel tense today, but we haven't discussed it further. I understand my fiance struggles with anxiety and can get insecure and worried. I always want to do what I can to support him and remind him I love him, but I don't think I did anything wrong here. Was my response flirty or inappropriate? In my eyes, I was intentionally fucking with a guy who was being pushy and disrespectful, and I'm 100% okay with that. First of all, can we take a second? Um, both of these entries are so well written. Mm -hmm. I could never... It's her. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you rewording these to sound really nice? I do reword stuff on the fly. Oh, okay. that's good. Okay. Um, but yeah, I try they, to read real fast. They sound so good. Um <sighs> Um, do you want to take this yeah, or do you want yeah, to I'll take, take this? it? I'll take it. Um, I, first off, she told him that she would never tell him about any guy coming up to her because he probably doesn't feel good about it. This probably happened in the past where he probably got aggressive or walked away or was just mad about it the whole night when, you know, she can't help it. If she's a pretty girl, guys are going to come up to her. She can't help it. Yeah, it is what it is. If there's a guy that's asked more than two, three times for a certain thing and she says no, and he continues to do it. I think at that point, she has every right to do it in whatever way she finds fun. That to me was not flirty at all. To me, that was like an, like it was an asshole move, which I think what she was trying to be was an asshole, right? Yeah. At that point, like kind of like difficult, not difficult, but 
Just not just giving like, a fuck. Like, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, fuck off. Like, give me some money or quit wasting my time. Fuck off. Like, yeah. it was, it was, to me, it felt like a Blanton, fuck you. Like, yeah. Get away. Like, mm-hmm. you want my autograph? That's the weirdest pickup line I've ever heard. Like, price went up to $100. And yeah. if he did, that's the thing. If he did have like $100, whoop, right there. Then she might have been fucked. She would have been fucked. A little she, bit. She, she probably would have denied it. She, I could see her deny her it. First of all, it just goes to show the guy didn't want her that bad. Yeah. 60 bucks, that's the deal. I will say, I can understand how it come can come off as flirtatious hearing the story. Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't you just be like, no, I'm engaged, bye. Like, it kind of egged it on in a yeah. way if you hear the story like that. Obviously, he would know his fiance best and the way, I guess, it could have been said. I get it though. Nobody wants to hear really if, you know, your partner is being hit on constantly. It's just like a, okay, you want to be informed, but at the same time, when you are informed, you still kind of get like frustrated about it. So I get yeah. where he's coming from for that. And then also her being like, well, I just didn't want to, to come off as like rubbing it in rubbing your face in. type thing. Yeah. Um, so I totally understand that. And it's just, it's kind of disrespectful. You didn't bring it up to, if, if you get a hit on like quickly, for you to go to your hey, boyfriend and say that, hey, just that, that guy over there just, just hit, on, hit me. on me. What do you? What, so what do you want him to do about it's it? Like his you reaction, unless he like slapped your ass or something, that's when you should like notify your boyfriend. Hey, he just like he just touched me. Just literally, let you know yeah, that. assaulted me. Like, but there, there's no harm in somebody coming up to somebody and saying that they're pretty or asking for their phone number or something, and then saying no and walking away. That, it, yeah. I, it's not like it's not like if I want to know that or not. I just don't need to know that because it's unimportant. It's it's a literally a part of life. Well, yeah, and it's yeah. like ignorance is bliss too. Like yeah. that's why they agreed together. I'm not going to bring this up to you because it doesn't make you feel good. It mm-hmm. makes you feel insecure, and that is tough. Like if he's insecure and kind of feels like he's in this position of like he outkicked his coverage mm-hmm. and his girlfriend's way hotter or fiance or whatever is way hotter than what he thinks he's worthy of any guy could be a threat and like that's exhausting. So mm-hmm. no, why would she tell you? And it was it was inconsequential. He walked away, went back to the bar, done. The friend only brought it up because she found it funny. Like yeah. Yeah. and it was such an odd pickup line, but it wasn't meant to be this like big ordeal. Mm-hmm. I'm also the same uh, like regardless of even if I felt like in her position, if she felt like she was right, she thinks his reaction is wrong. I'm also the person in the relationship to be like, I personally didn't think so at the time. And I did not mean for it to come across that way at all. If you think that that crossed the line or came across a certain way, I will never do that again. And I'm sorry that I upset you for that. And I will handle it differently moving forward. Yeah. Regardless, I could be like, you know what? I didn't think it was that bad, but it made my partner feel that Mm -hmm. way. And I would never want them to feel that again. Or I'd be like, just ask for more money next time, baby. And just split it with me. (laughs) Yeah, right? A yeah, yeah. thousand bucks. A hundred dollars. There's the angel and the devil on the shoulders, right? It's yeah. the two of you. Yeah. I think that would be a really healthy response, especially like they're getting married. Yeah. This is going to be something that is going to continue to happen. I mean, she said it happens three to five times a night when they go out. That's why he should just lock her in the room and never let her leave and go out. <laughs> I think you just avoid it at all costs, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's the best approach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm so one to just communicate it out and be like, let's avoid this and never have this happen again. Yeah. So the top comment, I liked your wording here. Internal polite response clock has run out. Mm. And that is like a good point too. Like when you're telling someone like, no, not interested. And they don't take no for an answer. You have your friend advocating for you, probably saying, no, she's she's engaged or whatever it is. Like they're not taking the hint. It's like, okay, at that point, like, fuck it. Let's, yeah. let's go nuclear. Yeah. My fuck budget just hit zero, baby. There's a bunch of other comments. People kind of being like, well, you didn't have to handle it that way. It was immature. So OP does give us some edits. Okay, y'all. Goodness. Just want to add in two things because they're being mentioned a lot. First, my fiance is a great dude. He is smart and fun and supportive in a million different ways. He is self-aware and he knows he's a bit anxious and struggles with insecurity. He's working on it. At the same time, I do have empathy about the discomfort of seeing your partner get hit on a bunch. It also makes me uncomfortable, for the record. Second, and I've discussed this with my fiance and he has expressed no issues with it, I don't know and I never have used my relationship status to reject men. If I say no, 
that's enough of an answer. And if they don't respect that on its own without my tie to another man, that's a problem. Also, I'm clearly wearing an engagement ring. If a guy approaches me, they either didn't care to look or saw and didn't give a hoot. Mm -hmm. And I do get her point. Like, it is frustrating to have to be like, oh, well, I have a boyfriend. And it's like a guy will respect that more so than just a no. Like almost like yeah. the the territory. Yeah, like I'm not going to step on another guy's territory. territory. Yeah, it's kind of. But then up. again, a lot of guys are like, just because there's a goalie doesn't mean you can't sc- like that type. Yeah. of... there's some of those out there yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it's, or but it's, or it might like encourage them more to think that like, I don't know. People people are weird. Uh, but yeah, I, I get the whole fact like, just no means no, regardless of being like. Also, sometimes I feel like uh, the relationship thing could be like a cop out answer, mm-hmm. which a lot of people use. I feel. Yeah, I mean, there's there's girls, like, it's a big thing now to wear engagement rings out to the bar to, like, have an excuse to be just like, mm. I'm engaged, even mm. though they're not, and they're actually single. And as soon as they see a guy she, they like, they go, whoop. whoop. Take it off. It's a good tactic. But that was kind of bad, too. Imagine you're looking at a girl all night, you're like, oh, she's married, and then hey. she takes her off. Literally. And then goes to walk, uh, talk to you, and I'm like, what? This happened to a friend of mine. She was at Runyon and, like, ran into this guy, and she was wearing, like, a graduation ring from her dad on mm. her her ring Uh finger and the guy kept like looking at her and her hands and like they really had this crazy chemistry on the hiking trail and she ran into him again like he didn't ask for her number that day she ran into him again a week or two later and he was like hey I noticed you're not wearing that ring today like I was gonna hit on you last time but notice you had a you know an engagement ring she's like oh my god is that why you didn't ask me so she almost blew her shot Wow. Yeah, like, what are the odds you run into the same person twice mm-hmm. at Runyon? Like, it was crazy. Runyon is, I, I don't understand. How is he, is he following her? Like, how, 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 how is he? Happenstance. I go uh, to Runyon all the time. You're not really next to anybody the whole time. You, you're, you're pretty, you either walk past them. They you're not, past. you're not making yourself. Nobody wants to, to be people. hit on at fucking, while they're hiking. It's like the last. Honestly. At I Runyon, yeah. I, don't I think feel like. so. It doesn't mm, seem like it. I feel like girls go to Runyon and they pop off. Like that is. To, to, <laughs> me, to me, it's like the gym. It's like nobody wants to be bothered at the gym. Runyon's a different thing, especially if you have a dog. Like it's if you more have of a cute scene. dog with it's you. A, it's a place to like meet people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll take that back. I mean, I've seen like uh, one of my other friends met Oprah at Runyon. No way. And she like commented on her dog and then they got a pic. It, it was a crazy And now they're married. Yeah. Her and Oprah. She, did she give her a car? No, mm. God, she should have. That'd be one hell of a. Look. She really should have. <laughs> no, you guys should go to Runyon. I got Oprah, a, Oprah's I got giving a out car. cars at Runyon. Oh my God, that might be a good strategy though to get some good press for the pod. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool. But I do see her point. Back mm-hmm. to this before we move on. I do see her point where like a no from you should be enough. But hey, you got the ring. Use it to your advantage. You have to talk less. Less fucks to give. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm engaged. Yeah. Like I get the principle of what you're doing. And if you really don't want to share your relationship status you do you but it is a lot quicker it is and you get rid of them faster especially i think engaged is a per is like the best one i think that i think engaged is stronger than married and uh boyfriend and girlfriend really yeah because engaged is it's fresh it's new i'm i'm excited leave me alone i know Mm. because married it's like you've been married for how long maybe you're kind of sick of the relationship maybe i do have a chance Interesting. That is so interesting. And I can, I completely could see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My fiance, he's like, I don't want to get married. Like being able to say fiance just sounds so cool. Mm -hmm. Like he does want to get married, but just like he loves the label fiance versus, oh, my wife. But I also feel like a little embarrassed saying it sometimes. Really? It's like. Does it feel braggy? A little bit. Sometimes it comes. I feel the same. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to show off. Yeah, it's almost like a, okay. <laughs> like, cool. I feel like every time I've used it, it's been like, not in an unnecessary way, but it's just like a detail that's like too much to where yeah. it's like, okay. Like we got it. <laughs> okay, moving along. This next one is coming from Am I the Asshole? It's a doozy of a title. Am I the asshole for being truthful with my friends when telling them I won't go on a weekend away because I don't want to talk about marriage slash babies for three days? To me, already, I don't think I'm going. It's almost like you don't want to be like a third wheel. It really depends on the people. 
You okay. know what I mean? I got I to gotta see how they are with their kids. I just want I want to feel the vibe. There's a whole vibe, mm. right? Definitely. Because there's some nasty, nasty kids out there. Mm. And there's times where I, I would not want to be on a trip with them. I so hit, it all oh, depends. Hit depends, a baby. You know? <laughs> hit oh, a baby. Not scared to hit a kid. <laughs> I, 27 female, have a group of friends, eight of us, and we have been friends for over a decade since school. Now, we don't live in the same place, but we meet up a couple times a year for a weekend in an Airbnb. This used to be a weekend of good food, drinks, hot tubs, etc. I am content with my life at the moment. I am single, dating, and I don't know if I would like children. But in the event I did, I know I wouldn't want one soon. Around five of my friends— five out of the eight, are either married or in very long-term relationships. Of these five, two either have a baby or are pregnant. I will be seeing all of my friends this year for various weddings, friend-slash-baby events. I have been invited on this year's girls' trip. I have said I can't come. I didn't originally provide a reason. When queried in person by my friend, who is pregnant, I told her the truth. I am not going because it's a massive financial expense for three days where we only talk about people's upcoming engagements, weddings, babies. I have a lot going on, but I feel a lot of my friends do not show an interest unless I talk about someone I'm dating. I also, last time, listened to one of my friends talk about her breastfeeding plans with vengeance for over an hour. (laughs) She is not pregnant or even trying. Truthfully, it's boring and it feels dismissive. It's also a really expensive way to feel bad about myself. I made it clear when telling my friends this that I'm thrilled for them all living the lives they want, but maybe it's not the weekend for me at the moment. Meaning it feels like the group has two distinct life stages. I'm in the minority and it focuses on one stage. My friend has since told me she's really hurt and I'm not excited for her or our other friends. I responded saying, I evidently was from other actions excited for them, but I just think this trip wasn't for me. I do have numerous other things going on, and to fit this in both my calendar and financially, it's a struggle. I just want to add for this friend specifically, I have gone on three weekends away for her wedding, and I am flying to go to her baby shower, all in the last two years. I have not asked her, nor has she wanted to fly to see me for anything in the last Mm. two years. So my question is, am I the asshole for being truthful with the reason why I can't go? No! No, absolutely not. No. No, especially now that like it's been kind of like a one one-sided relationship. I mean, yeah. I think I think she's doing the best for herself and if I was in her position, I probably wouldn't go either cuz I I I see, I'm kind of like in her position right now and if all if I knew that all my friends that's all they were going to talk about, if I knew that. Yeah. yeah. That's I probably wouldn't either just for my own like mental health. Yeah. I, I mean, just feel like maybe next time. Yeah. I get it. It's, it. I mean, trips like that obviously are a lot of money to like, you know, you use your time off or whatever to go do these trips. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I totally get her. You don't have to. I feel like people feel like they have to do things like that they don't really want to do. Yeah. Um, Just to make other people happy. And it's okay to say no to things. It's okay to do what you want. Yeah. Don't go on the trip. Save the money. If they want to come out and see you, come out and see you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I've been learning to say no a lot lately. I would say in the past year, I've if even like a sliver of no, like 10% no, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to pass on this. Yeah. Unless I'm feel, unless I'm not feeling 100 for it. Not then about I, it. Yeah. God, I feel so honored you're here today now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You want me to tell you the truth? <laughs> <laughs> you almost canceled? No, 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 no. <laughs> If your ass was in like Culver City, I don't know. No, <laughs> no, it's the location. We're yeah. close. We're neighbors. Yeah. No, Loca- location is everything. I would say yes to everything if it was in my neighborhood. In your backyard, yeah. yeah no, I, I get that. Like especially LA, getting across town is hard. I I initially read this and I was like, okay, well, you know, two out of the eight are pregnant or have a kid. Like that's yeah. not. Yeah, there's yeah. still six other people that are kind of in your boats, no kids. But then like hearing how much effort our OP has put into traveling for weddings and mm-hmm. baby showers, like she traveled three weekends and is now traveling for a baby shower for this one friend. Yeah. yeah, That's insane. And I think it is pretty common in friend groups and it's now starting to be talked about 
if you're the single friend and all of your friends are kind of in other stages as you, you're getting them wedding gifts. Mm -hmm, you're yeah. flying. You're buying your bridesmaid's dress. You're getting them baby shower gifts. Where's the single friend getting accommodated for moving into their own apartment or mm. getting a new job? Like you don't have those those typically normal things to celebrate your single friend. Yeah. And so it's like, it's always the single friends dishing out money for these people for like normal life events. That's a really good way to think about it. I never thought of it about it like that from a singles uh, yeah. Yeah. perspective. It's, it would be frustrating. It would be really frustrating. And I don't blame her. It's, it's let's exhausting. Let's celebrate the yeah. single people. Yeah. I just don't know what, how do we celebrate them? Three years of that not having a boyfriend girlfriend, like okay, Ooh. like, I like you that. are like you're powerful. You are you are independent. Where's my independence party? Yeah, you know what I mean. Zane, let's throw you an I independence love party. That. July fourth. I was gonna say July fourth. Uh, July fourth, celebrate all the single people. Independence, that are, Day, independence Day for yes. America yeah. and our single friends out there. Yeah, very good. I love. Let's make that. something for it. Hey, how do we, how do we start that? that? You heard it here, guys. You heard it here. Independence right. Day. Let's start next month. Any of your single friends who have not been dating for more than a year and their year is about to hit next month, do a big ass celebration. They, it would mean so much to them. And then then, then they'll start buying all those tickets and flights and all that bullshit to all your weddings and yeah. Then all it, that it, stuff. Then there's some give and take, but there yeah. hasn't been give and take. And like hearing about one person talk about breastfeeding for an hour when they're not even pregnant or trying Oh, haven't you been in one of those conversations where you're with your friend enough. and you're like, I just, can we move on? We really got to move know, on. It's all they know what to talk about. Mm. But it's hard when you're in those conversations that it's just like, okay, this is really like not relatable. It's not going anywhere. We're talking in circles. Yeah. Right. And you don't want to be rude, but at the same time, like, okay, we get it. Especially when there's alcohol involved and mm -hmm. like, you really just, you're just talking. How are you talking about breastfeeding and titty milk while you're drunk as fuck? I feel like that's the last thing you're thinking about. Like feeding your baby <laughs> when you're drunk. Yeah, it's probably it's probably not a good mix. Yeah. You no, know, you got a, a lot of people pump and dump, but apparently you don't you don't necessarily have to anymore. What's so says, pump and dump is when it's from nip to mouth, or is it from nip to bottle? Um, you, so you pump it into a bottle. Yeah. Oh, you, okay. Or like whatever the the storage units that the breast pumps have mm -hmm. like attached, but a lot of people after they have a lot of alcohol in their system, they have to pump to like cleanse it so the baby doesn't get drunk. So they say. I'm wow. not, I don't know. I don't have kids. See? I haven't gone there. This is why they talk about it for an hour because there's so much you know. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I mean, it is interesting, but I get the frustration. I was a little scared where the comments were going to go though. What do, you, what do you think the vote is on this one? So I think it's going to be- I think they're going to take the girl's side. Majority in favor of this girl needs to do what she feels right. Um, especially when it's so exhausting, when you feel like you go above and beyond for everybody else and it's not reciprocated, you get tired of it. And you're mm -hmm. like, I feel like all I do is give and give and give. And when you don't see it in return, you're like kind of at your breaking point. Yeah. Can I say something? It's also really easy to see it from their, pers from their point of view too. I've noticed that we're always agreeing with the person writing it, but who knows well, what's going yeah. on on the other end mm. of the of the stories. Yeah. Well, I know be, that's the whole point. But. No, no, no. And I, I could see like, because when I first read it, I didn't get all the way through because I was just like initial scan to make sure it's at least decent enough yeah. for an episode. And I so I stopped reading after I was like, okay, it's good enough. And initially I was like, well, that's kind of, it's kind of selfish because like in a sense, like, yeah, you're just not at the same stage as them, but like you're also almost in a sense, like not being as good of a friend by like just go not going because you don't want to hear them talk about their kid. Yeah. Like they do have kids now. How can you all come together to make it a balance? Mm -hmm. You're not even giving them the opportunity to like address it and be like, hey, I don't have kids. I feel like the past trips have been very engagement, wedding, kid centered. Can mm. we make this more fun? Can we like kind of have a rule where we keep that tone yeah, down. Yeah, but you also don't want to be the person that is like, guys, are not going to talk about kids. They're not going to. It's That's like if, if you yeah. feel like yeah. if you feel like you're going to be annoyed and it's best for you to sit it out, then sit it out. Yeah, you because know? that does start fights. Like if, as soon as you have a thought like that, where hey, can we do this trip like a little fun? Oh, the last one wasn't fun. True. Oh, I'm sorry. Last one wasn't up to your standard. We all had fun. Sounds like you're the only odd man. Maybe you're the problem. I'm sorry that mm. this is part of my life right now, and I have kids, <laughs> and I'm excited to talk about it. <laughs> you're so right. Yeah, you Isn't can't. It, you it's can't. so exhausting what like we will get in fights over with yeah. people. 
Like, you just have to surround yourself around people that's like similar to you, like yeah. your interests. And I mean, that's the only way. And you have to do it without like starting any fights. I know. You just have to. God, it's so hard. I, I feel like that's how, that's why so many friendships end. Like, especially in that, like, that uh, time of the life when yeah. like, people are getting married and shit is because you're not, you can't, like, relate anymore to what your friends are. Doing. Yeah, like, Zane doesn't want to be friends with me anymore because we're engaged now and we're going to be getting married. And moving wow. to Tennessee. And uh, Where in Tennessee? Nashville? Uh, so we're going to be, like, just outside of uh, Chattanooga. Chattanooga, whatever the fuck that place is. He's going to be in the middle that's of nowhere. Kind of, that is a little far. Nashville, I love Nashville. I could yeah. live there. But Chattanooga. It's like know. two hours or so from Nashville. The Wi-Fi doesn't exist over yeah, there. Yeah, you're not. That's far. I don't know how he's going to post his Instagram stories out there and his content. They, they got coffee shops with Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> and internet cafe. I know, but you're not going to need if you have kids. Do you need kids? You don't need Wi-Fi when you have kids, right? I don't know. Yeah, it depends you, on if you yeah. want an iPad baby or not. You should not. start over. Like, oh, I love chur- iPad babies. Get them to chur- put them in a corner. Butter. Look at that screen. <laughs> Creating a monster. No, I can't stand that stuff. You know who who are iPad babies? All of us. I didn't right have an iPad. No, right now. Oh yeah, we're iPad babies. Yeah, I do feel a little that we're we, stunted. We're iPad kids. Yeah, iPad, hundred percent. The time I spent on my phone, I checked. The other, it's like um, it was like thirty six hours of on screen my phone. time. Yeah, in one, in one day, in one week. <laughs> oh my god! In one week, thirty six hours. That's pretty intense. Yeah, right? that's, that's that's borderline full time job. That is, yeah. Yeah. A 40 hour work week. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. But we work from our phones. We do. A little bit of an excuse. Bitch, I know, we're not working when we go through TikTok. We're not working. We're pulling inspiration. Yeah. I, yeah. There. Yeah. I'm doing research. <laughs> so, top comment on this one not the asshole. Because the real issue here is different from how it seems. On the surface, this seems like it's just about engagements, weddings, and babies. You go out of your way to be constantly supportive of them. However, they don't reciprocate that for you. They can't relate to anything or want to relate to anything outside of their lives. It would sort of be like if you had just won an award, but all they talked about was the pie they just ate that morning. OP responds, Maybe. I spent 13 weekends last year traveling, including transport and hotels, for this group's big events, and I am happy for them. That said, it's a massive financial outlay I am expected to attend, and they are not interested in mine. They were all invited to my birthday recently and said they were too busy from work slash had plans with partners. Mm. Too busy being married yeah, with kids. Unbelievable. To come to the city for a night, even though accommodation was free. That's really. That's crazy. We needed that context in the original post. Like yeah. easy off the bat. No conversation needed. Not the asshole. Mm-hmm. 13 weekends. There's only that's 52 a weeks a year. That's a lot. That's what? Math wise. 30, I don't know math. 25%. It just about, yeah. yeah. I I can't. That's a lot. I want the bride and groom to start having to pay for everybody's shit if they want them to go on this fucking expensive ass trip. Dude, I think it's, that's got that shit's well, gotten crazy. Also, weddings are absurdly expensive. That that's why I'm doing it on my farm. I'm just like absurd saving on the venue at least, and we're just having food trucks. Yeah, but I think that shit has gotten crazy. Like, you should not have to go to four events for one couple getting married. No. An engagement party, a bridal shower, a bachelor or bachelorette trip, and then the actual wedding. Don't forget the the, no. the, the uh, re- reception or not the reception, the rehearsal, uh, rehearsal dinner. dinner before. And Five. all that and all that risk for sixty percent divorce rate. Come Ooh. on now, Ooh. all that for a sixty percent divorce rate. That's like if you look at it from a business perspective, it's not very smart. The risk is way too high to spend to be spending all this money for one night. Put that money in some stocks, exactly. baby. Get a house. Yeah, Robin Hood. That's, a, that's it. Wedding. These weddings are houses, like full some houses. People, some people really go crazy. There was one that went super viral on TikTok for a while, and it turns out she spent like four million for her wedding in Paris, and then her fiance mm. is like getting a felony in in Texas and he wasn't even supposed to go to Paris. No way. Oh yeah, and then she took down all the wedding videos. It was crazy TikTok drama. Oof, and they didn't have the money to bail him out because they just spent $4 million on that wedding. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. Yeah. So our OP does provide us a little bit of an update here. Okay. Thank you all for the responses and comments. Just a few things to note in response to some of the general themes of response. I do show an interest in their weddings, engagements, babies, and baby plans. I am excited for them. I text about it. I ask for updates. I go to and help plan events for these things. 
My issue is three days of talking about this like it's the only topic of substance is not fun, especially when I don't feel an interest is reciprocated to me on my life. We don't need anything else. And there's still three more bullet points. It's easy yeah. to show interest back when they're showing interest in anything that you have going on in your, you know, in your single life. You know what I mean? If if they yeah. show interest in anything they say is just easier to like, you'll probably want to stop, stop talking about yourself because they're doing such a good job in showing interest in what you have to say, where you just like, you know, what? I'm going to focus on them yeah. the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's definitely no reciprocation for sure. No. And that's just, oh, it feels so terrible. And point number two, this is where it gets juicy. I have spoken to one of my other friends invited on the trip who is also not at the baby stage of life. Mm. She is also not going on the trip and she said she is not attending for the same reason. Mm. Feels good when you have it back yep. up. Yeah. Three, the friend I expressed this to has apologized for her initial reaction and is still trying to convince me to come. I am not going to go, but I'm hoping she at least considers what I've shared. Four, I do have other friends in the city I live in and they are a joy to be in the company of. Maybe this is because we became friends as adults and have more similar lifestyles. Who knows? Finally, some comments about me being jealous, hating myself, hating my life, etc. To confirm, dear strangers on the internet, I am content. Thank you for the concern, though. Um, Whoever said that is fucking nuts, first of all. <laughs> She's 27. <laughs> She's being single at 27 is like, is that's normal. Normal, yeah. Like, yeah, I People think uh, I think the the whole approach to it and reasoning. I mean, if you're going into it just being like, I just don't want to hear what you guys have to talk about because that's what stage you're at at life. And like, if that was the only reason, I'd be like, ah, well, I mean, they're your friends. Just just hear them out. Just mm -hmm. listen and just be excited, whatever. But everything else on top of that, I think, should be what's driving this argument. Yeah, she just wants to have a good time. And if you already know you're not going to have a good time, you're essentially spending a lot of money to have a bad time. Yeah. No, yeah. What? Where does that math add up? Mm -mm. It doesn't. Save that money. Save that money. So pay, pay for my flight then. Yeah. You guys, you you, you married people. You got dual incomes. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah, do you, a fund. You, you, how bad do you want me to be there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pay for my ticket. <laughs> I'm flying four times in the past uh -huh. two years for you and your wedding and babies. Yeah. Make this make sense. Where's my present? For me, Ashley. Yeah. I wonder if any of these girls ever see these Reddit posts. I was just thinking about yes. that a couple minutes ago. Yes. They, they do? do? Yeah, I've done a whole theme where we have like <laughs> two sides and like the husband writes in bitching about the wife and then the wife finds it and shares her side and it's the no. most fun. It's wow. so good. Do you think they're like still fighting to this day after or like it's more Some kinda... laugh about it depending on the problem. Some, oh, okay. some are like my husband's an idiot. Ha ha. Okay. But some I think are like found it. We're done. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Or do you see him like comment under OP and be like, Hi, it's your wife, Sarah here. Yeah, we get that too. Dang. Reddit I, is... I would be below be like, what are you looking up, babe? <laughs> like, you got it. You just got to be as broad as possible so people cannot pick it apart. Yep. Fake names. Details change. Always. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Instead of three mm. friends, say six friends, you know, just... Got to change it all. Hmm, yep. Interesting, Ashley. This story sounds a lot like what we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, this next one, it would be pretty unfortunate if the the other party found it. Uh oh. Which one? The one you're about to say right the now. The one I'm about to read. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's hear it. So this one is coming from R slash Today I Fucked Up. It's titled Today I Fucked Up telling my boyfriend that I used to almost vomit while giving him a blowjob because of his odor. That's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And he should not he should not mm -hmm. be upset about that. That is that is hygiene, my dude. I feel so is, bad. Is that you? Mm. I'm a stinky boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's ways to go about things, man. For her or for him? For for both parties. He, he can I mean he could fucking he could at least clean down there. I mean it should be stinking like that. The, it's as simple as being like, hey baby, by the way. Your dick stinks. Like, could you could you shower real quick? I'm I'm fine with doing this, but like, uh, you see, you're a little bit sweaty and stinky right now. She she probably she probably did. We're gonna we're gonna tell you right now. Oh yeah, she's gonna tell us, Heath. Okay. I feel so bad, but it's also sort of on him. For most of our relationship, my boyfriend has had a strong odor in his crotch area, the type most women would refuse to go down on, fish, smegma, that type of smell. Whoa. I still go down on him because I do love giving blowjobs. And I know it's not because he flat out doesn't wash himself. 
I know he takes showers regularly. I will have him take a shower before I go down on him, like directly before, and it will still smell foul down there. Interesting. I have no idea how that's possible, but I attune his smell to be because he is very overweight. I have dropped so many hints, y'all, and I told him flat out to take a shower before sex because I don't like the smell. I've even washed his crotch for him when we take pre-sex showers. <laughs> All of this, I have said gently. <laughs> Milk? Are you milking him? No, like a towel on each end <laughs> and just fucking like a hacksaw. What is it? The, yep. <laughs> the hacksaw. But it has been a bit better lately. This morning in bed, I sniffed his hand and jokingly gagged and asked if he had been scratching his nuts, <laughs> which I can always smell on his hands. Yuck, oh, I know. God. And he laughed and said yes. After a few seconds, I said, we've been dating for a while and you know I like to be honest with you and proceeded to tell him that I used to hold my breath during blowjobs because when I'd breathe, I'd be close to throwing up. They, he thinks he's making her choke and gag. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He, uh, okay. I mean, this doesn't seem like a shock. It sounds like she's multiple times have told him that you stink. So that that's not like that big of a secret that she was just holding her breath. Yeah, no shit. You think she was breathing it in just as. <sighs> I'm so, I'm a little nauseous it sounds, over here. Okay, so Ooh. Matt, all right. Matt was telling me how there's a, there's a there's a thing there's a disease that you can have where you smell like fish, and you it doesn't matter how hard you scrub with yeah, soap. It does I forget not, the name of it. I don't think that's there specifically. I think that's your whole body. But what if what if that's the start? It starts in his mm. taint. I know what you're thinking. Stop giving him head. What the fuck? I know. I know. It was just so hard for me to take the final step in letting him know how bad it was by refusing to go down on him. If I simply said I didn't want to give him head, he'd understand and never pressure me. But I still didn't want to hurt his feelings. Don't roast me too hard, please. Anyways, he knew he smelled bad, but thought the showers helped completely. He has left the room due to hurt feelings. Now I feel like an asshole, lol. I mean... This sounds like a medical issue, to be honest. It does. I think, I think the best route for both of them to go is for her... Is just because it's like, a, you know, they're a couple and it could be nice, but they could both go to the doctor and yeah. just try to figure out what it is. There's got to be sure some sort of like pH balance wipe for yeah. guys or something. And that's what I'm wondering if it's a pH issue or like, honestly, maybe he has an untreated STI because like smegma, like for those that don't really know what smegma know is, what is, it is a thick cheesy looking secretion around your genitals that collects when you don't wash them regularly. It can be white or yellow. It's a combination of oils from your sebaceous glands, dead skin, and cells. So if he's got smegma. I think it's a hygiene problem. It's. I can smell it. It's, Stop. It's I can like smell it. a little gonna... bit of both. Like it feels like it's both because she's even saying he's doing showers right before sex, daily showers, and he still smells. It could be, I, I, I know it's an uh, imbalance of something and I'm sure it's it like a- could be diet too. Or like, diet, yeah. And like granted, like she does oily, mention- fatty, nasty mm -hmm. foods. It could just be a lot of fried, yeah, oily stuff because like I had dairy last night and like I can feel it. Like I really? just like, I don't do dairy ever and yeah. I just feel terrible there, today. There's certain mm. foods where like I will, like my like my hands will smell after showering, washing, it's just certain Onions. foods. Onions. Certain foods you just have to avoid because Burgers. it just, your body doesn't, it, it just, it, yeah. it makes a seep out of your skin and you just can't Well, like, it's like the it. meat sweats too. If you meat have like a lot of, too. a lot of meat yeah. and like you, oh. I would love to hear like what he's eating every day. Like just like, is he eating a lot of meat, a lot of like garlic? Yeah, is he very, eating a lot of fish? Like who knows? What I'm if he's very curious. what if he's like his favorite thing to eat is just fucking fish, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Who knows? I'm curious. The only edit or update we have on the original post is uh, OP does share that he is circumcised, which does help with the smegma because I know mm. for some people, in there. well, people that are not circumcised, if they're not taught to pull back the mm. skin and wash. When it does pull back, it looks like cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm so sorry, yeah, everyone. We, 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 have a, we have a couple friends with that type of penis. So <laughs> Hopefully they know how to wash properly. I don't know. You'd be surprised. I'm not seeing a lot of comments on this one. I think like 
unfortunately, this might not be the best <laughs> relationship for OP. Well, if she's if she keeps smelling fucking smegma every time she goes down, it's tough. It, it's like there's clearly something going on. Yeah, Especially it's, if he's it's washing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's something. It it's seems something. like it's getting to the point for her where she's like not even attracted to him anymore because of this issue. And yeah. it's just pushing them apart. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. at that point you make the decision. I wonder if she if he smells up here or is it just down there? Mm. It, it's it's got to be waft, wafting, wafting up there. Yeah, it would have to. Well, the other problem is do you know, like, there's this stat where, on average, you touch, like, 10 dicks a day from people not washing their hands? No way. Yeah. So, if you, like, touch a doorknob of, like, a house or a bathroom, like, you probably just touched a dick from someone not washing their hands. And so, like, she literally, he was smelling his hands or she got a whiff of his hands and it smelled like his crotch. It's like, you're rubbing mm. your nuts and then you don't wash your hands. Like, dudes, oh, dudes going to the bathroom and having that mindset of like, well, I just touched myself. Disgusting. <laughs> Wash your hands, you dirty, bad. dirty piece. Dirty pig. Ugh. But but you know what I like to do? I like to wash my hands before yeah. I touch my peach. Too. You should do both. You know I feel I mean? like it should be yeah. a sandwich yeah. for guys, just, to be exactly. honest. 100%. Because what if you just had hot sauce and then you're going to touch your dick exactly. and you get hot sauce it on it? I've accidentally maced myself twice or three times. Maced twice, Tabasco sauce in the eyes once. Yeah. Not good. So your urethra? Mm -hmm. oh. Would not like that at all. Ugh. Like you have like a mace on your keychain that like kind of like went off a little bit. I was you... testing it one time, maybe twice. And then the wind took it. <sighs> yeah. We, we did that with bear spray. Oh. We were going on a hiking trip and I wanted to see if it worked. It, it works. It catches the wind quick. Quick. You wouldn't quick. think so. And it shoots so far. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> it's intense. It's really intense. Really oh, intense. once the wind takes it, it'll just like go everywhere. You like don't a swarm know. Of bees. You yeah, don't know. It shoots out in like a straight just run. line, but it the, just those particles just being around it, it'll like choke you up and you'll yeah. just <laughs> start gagging. It's really bad. Oh, it's so just terrible. No one should go through that unless they deserve it. We should do that. We should do <laughs> it for Nobody should ever go through it unless they deserve Muggers, it. Muggers, <laughs> bad people. Yeah, I agree. I'm not seeing comments about diet, really. There is kind of one like that mentions the smell is off and on. It depends on what he's eaten and what he's done at work. It's not a deal breaker because it's not as if he's neglectful towards his hygiene. So, hmm. I don't know. Doctor. Yeah. Doctor, I, I doctor. Would, I would say this is definitely a medical thing that needs to be evaluated. And you could try like flavored lube or like things that are very like scented. Like I okay. love coconut oil and I feel like it's like a two birds, one stone. You use coconut oil, makes the hand movements feel gliding. Mm -hmm. And you also get to whiten your teeth at the same time because coconut oil whitens it's your teeth. It's edible. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Or maybe yeah. a little bit of summer's eve. Mm. Vaginal spray. I mean, I'm sure it'll work for dudes too. I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know. Isn't about that, that just a isn't that just a perfume? I feel like I'm really nervous to try that type of stuff because I feel like that really messes with your pH. Ooh. Coconut oil, unrefined, All natural. virgin. Oh, don't it's listen. Natural. Don't listen to me, guys. It's the best lube you will ever use. Wow. Ever. Okay. Ever. Huh. Yeah, you guys, you, you go home. You test it out. You Let's could, try it you out can later, cook Jordan. With that stuff yeah, too, right? You, it's so versatile. Wow. You can do oil pulling with it. You take a spoonful in the morning. Squish I've, it. Yeah, I've what is seen what is that? that? People it doesn't so seem good. It doesn't seem right. It does whiten the fuck out of your teeth. Really? But doesn't it destroy like your gums? Mm -mm, it's actually supposed to be really good for your gums. How do you do it again? You take a spoonful of it, like a small little spoonful, and put it in your mouth. Swish it around for what you can tolerate. They With say about 20 no? minutes. No. Once you put it in your mouth, it heats up and just becomes a liquid. Got it. It's Wait, really for, good. you're swishing around for 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. So do it first thing in the morning, like when you wake up as you're like scrolling on your phone before you really get out of bed or get hmm. moving. And it it flies by. But how, how long are you doing it? Or not how long, but how many times a week are you doing that? A lot of people do daily. 20 minutes daily? Yeah. That's, in, you, that's insane. Mm-hmm. But you're doing other stuff. Like, do it as you're, like, yeah. you know, bopping around your house, making breakfast. But you, yeah, but you can't open your mouth. The, old, the old coconut oil is in your mouth. Can you not breathe out of your nose? Uh, no, I have DVDs. That's, um, what about a nose job? I could. 
how do you like I'm a nose breather through and through. Yeah. So when I get a cold and not being able to breathe out of my nose. Yeah, that's what it's like all the time. Oh, I have a tricky. mental breakdown. Like I yeah. can't I can't stand it. It's horrible. <sighs> you feel like you're like um it's like being claustrophobic in your own face. Yeah. I've never had anyone describe it like that. And that is exactly what it yeah, feels it's like. It's very uncomfortable. Have you tried like holding your nostrils open it's to stimulate yeah, do, what I'll, it would I'll, feel like? Yeah, I'll do this. Does it really work? Yeah. Oh my or, God. Or no, you do this too. This is, really, this. this is really good. This right here, look. Uh, pressing on your sinuses. Oh, it's crazy that people can yeah. breathe like that all the time. This is so. Do you have a deviated symptom too? I don't know if I do, but I can't breathe out of my nose. It's very difficult. You probably do. And you guys have great noses. It's not like you need it aesthetically like a nose job. Mm -hmm. And like no one does. Noses, everyone's nose is beautiful. But you should look into just getting the internal stuff. Like imagine what it would feel like to breathe every day. Yeah. Oh, imagine you get a deviated symptom, but then also you get a better nose too. <laughs> Your nose is really good. Thank you. Yeah. I wouldn't touch the nose. Uh, I won't. I definitely won't. Just go inside. Yeah. Back to this one. Before we move along. Top comment, he needs to go see a doctor. It's not normal to have that kind of smell after washing. This honestly sounds like a yeast infection. Yes, oh. men can have those too. Actually, one of the risk factors for yeast infections is being overweight. Wow. Mm -hmm. And diabetes can be a factor as well, someone shares. So is that like, is that coming from his, his peach or more of his taint? Like that, that, like, where would you think? Because the yeast infection. I would assume urethra. It's internal. No, no. For the, for the guys. I'm going to Google, where do men get yeast infections? Yeah. I would assume urethra. <laughs> but if he has, if he has segma on his balls. Inf it, it can cause, yes, men can get yeast infections too, which can lead to a condition known as balantitis, inflammation of the head of the penis. Yeast infections are men are common because the fungus that causes yeast infections, candida, is normally present on skin, especially moist skin. Oh, baby girl, you you sucking on that tip? Ew, that's actually come on horrifying when you think about it. Well, now I'm like, does it taste like sourdough bread? Maybe like a yeast starter. So it's not yeast. She's probably it's not salmon. She's smelling. It's yeast. Yeah. Oh, she's cooking up that dough down there. We gotta move along before we make everybody sick. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm getting hungry now. Yeah, I want a pizza. Oh, pizza Friday. It's Tuesday. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> the crazy thing is I got excited and accepted it. Taco I was like, Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. It is Taco there Tuesday. There you go. And a margarita. How good does that sound? And I had a burrito uh, early today. So I, I already, did too. I celebrated it already. There you go. Okay, moving along. Okay, this next one. 12 days old. Titled, my boyfriend doesn't want me drinking during the week. And I mean, a single glass of wine. So he says. Get rid of him. <laughs> me, 30 female, him, 27 male. I'm going to call him Dave for this post. I'm not even sure where to start. It was such a great Thursday. I got home from work and Dave and I went shopping and got a few things for dinner. Shrimp, salmon, and asparagus. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite meals. What goes well with this meal? A glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. When I asked my boyfriend if he could go get a small bottle of my favorite wine so we can have a glass with dinner, he said no. I was sort of thrown off by his response. And I asked him why. He said, quote, you shouldn't be drinking on a weekday. I said, pardon me? Then his response was, quote, your family are alcoholics and I don't trust your family genes. I was livid. Okay, mm. built up. Yeah, no way. My dad used to be a heavy drinker, but he no longer is. And even so, how does that have to do with how I am with it? I've never abused alcohol before. I haven't even had a glass of wine with dinner for as long as I can remember. I've been living on my own since I was 15. He's been living with me for about three years. I said to him that I'm a grown-ass woman, and if I want a glass of wine with my dinner, I'm more than welcome to do so, mm. and it's not his choice to have a say. And honestly, if he doesn't like that, then I feel like maybe he should move back to his dad's. Who gets mad for someone wanting a glass of wine with dinner? He ended up getting very angry and stormed off to his dad's house. In the end of all of this, the perfectly cooked dinner was left out and no one had dinner tonight and he will be staying at his dad's now. Am I the asshole? Absolutely not. Mm. A glass of wine is, there. 
There's nothing wrong with a glass of wine. She's not saying a bottle. It's crazy. I just can't wait to get the next things because I need to know more. I need to know like if it's like that was out of the blue. Like I need details, baby. You're addicted now. I would get it. I I would get if he had like um, if he had parents or had a brother that like died from alcoholism. Well, it seems like alcoholism runs in the family. No, not his family. uh, Her family. But. So it's like none of his business to be like telling her what to do. If if he if he like felt kind of uneasy about that and he felt uncomfortable, then maybe I would sympathize with him. But it sounds like he's just yeah. And there had to have been multiple conversations before this. It doesn't yeah. out of the blue like that is pretty random. It's so weird. I'm I feel like I'm good with giving advice and putting in my two cents because I'm always like. I don't know. I feel like I don't let things like work me up. And I always, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be type thing. Yeah. And I'd be like, all right, well, obviously like it's not working out. And if it bothers you and if it bothers them, then goodbye. Yeah. And I feel like that's always my response because it's never really like affected me. Like, especially like in friendships, like I've had friendships that I don't have anymore. It's like something happened. We didn't see eye to eye. And it's like, my life is better without somebody. Because to me, it's not even about the alcohol. It's just about like, what else are you going to do? That the the controlling, yes. aspect. controlling yes. aspect of it is just like, that's, yeah. that's where the problem is. And if it's, it sounds like with that, just with that hard no and just no explanation, just like you shouldn't be drinking that. It's like, oh, okay. So what else can I not do under your roof? Like, that's the thing. It's, it's one thing to say that and think that, you know, I think it's bad if you do this uh, coming from a concerned like loving standpoint and be like, Hey, you know, we, we drink a lot on the weekends. You know, what if we tried not drinking during the weekdays? It's all about the approach. It's about, you know, as opposed to just kind of like just springing it out of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a comment from OP clarifying, like, has he ever brought this up before? Like someone asked that yeah. and OP goes, no, he never did. Maybe because he knew how my dad was with it and my dad's father. Maybe he's just scared it will be passed down to me one day. I don't know. And someone else goes, if he ever saw evidence of that, then he'd be free to initiate a conversation about it. Deciding you can or can't drink is not appropriate at all, especially in the absence of any troubling behavior. So it does seem like it was just a random, Mm -hmm. no, you're not having wine during the week. Which like, there's also some studies that say a glass of red wine Mm -hmm. a night or with a meal or whatever, like is good for you. Like there's, Mm. there's some, there's a mix of research. I'm on her side fucking. But it's so weird. It's like, I don't like when people start trying to like police your behavior if it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, what is this? Like you said, what is this going to lead into? Right. Like, um, I used to chain smoke cigarettes. Okay. Um, I used to smoke about like two packs a day. Did you quit? You're I done, did. done. Yeah. So that's I, amazing. When I met Mariah, I was smoking, and I always knew she didn't like it. And I feel like it was probably like a year into our relationship, she was like, "I'm telling you this because I love you and I care about you, mm-hmm. and it's a health concern. I'm not telling you to do this, but I think it would be best to try to kick this habit, knowing that she cared about me so much and being like, hey." I would never want anything to happen to you mm-hmm. because of something like so stupid. Yeah, that you can just like, you can theoretically just stop. And like me quitting meant more f- in that way than not. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, you have this person you now love. I have like a reason to. There's a little bit more motivation there. Right. And you also get the perk of like, it's going to improve your health. Like yeah. it's, it's realistically, it's better for you long term. I, and like, I, I knew I stunk. I always smelled yeah, like cigarettes. Your fingertips. And like somebody who's a non smoker, like you smell it. Like if anybody has a, like it's like, yeah. it's so pungent. Like I was like, damn, like I felt bad. Like I felt selfish for just kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm so proud you were, you were able to quit. That's huge to go yeah, from two packs hard. a day. Like yeah. that is a lot of dedication and like, yeah, you had the external motivation, but you still had to have that intrinsic because yeah. otherwise it would never have worked. I switched to like the um, the e-cigarettes for a little bit. Yeah. And like that helped me get off. And then uh, I was ending, ended up being able to 
get off of that and just that's yeah that's amazing i love the way your fiance approached it too like it wasn't from this angle of control like you need to stop smoking it's like it's just genuine concern like Mm -hmm. hey i you know just looking out yeah i'd really you know maybe you could consider cutting back or quitting like that is a different angle like if this guy were to see her having a bottle of wine every night or maybe two glasses every night every day of the week like Hey, hon, like, I'm just a little concerned. Maybe we skip the wine with dinner tonight. But she even says, I can't even remember the last time I had a glass of wine with dinner. Yeah. Hmm. I don't have a problem. And then he's so mad that he, like, can't even enjoy the dinner then. Seems like something must have happened right before dinner that he was already, like, heated about and kind of, like, snapped. There's no mentions of it in OP's comments that I see. Not a lot beyond the post. So interesting. I don't know. But the top comment on this one, he's so pissed off that you wouldn't let him control you that he chucked a fucking tasty meal and went running back to his dad's house. I'm not trying to be one of those commenters who goes straight to either breakup or divorce. So my advice is in that order for you to continue this relationship. He needs to give you a really good apology. He needs to outline what he did that was wrong and why. He also needs to prove that he understands that it's not his place to decide for you whether you have a glass of wine with dinner or not. If he can't treat you as an equal partner who has agency over her own body and life choices, he's not the one. Yeah, he just sounds childish. Like just like the whole like throwing away dinner and just going to daddy's house just seems like he is a little immature. He has a little bit more room to grow. Yeah, and I also coming for me, that's a lot. I also think too, like (laughs) Mariah pretty much never drank our entire relationship. Yeah. Like she had like a few drinks and like would, you know, whatever. Maybe socially or randomly. Yeah. Super rarely. And like I was a heavy drinker and I knew like, I'm sure she wasn't like thrilled about that, Mm -hmm. but was just like. It's his choice. It's his choice. Yeah. You know, she never like made me like feel bad about doing it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it like it sounded like it was just genuine concern, which is like yeah. the total opposite of this. Mm-hmm. And I think like control, like this might be one of those early red flags that starts popping up. Like yeah. we've had a lot of stories um, on my dad's podcast lately where these listeners will write in and like ask for advice based on their situation. And the abuse they describe starts really small. He wouldn't let me listen to the type of music I liked. Mm -hmm. And then it escalates to if I make any noises when I'm falling asleep in bed, he gets pissed off. And it's like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Who can control if they start snoring as they're falling asleep? Or like, what? Do do people actually do that? The Hercules? (laughs) Yeah. My, oh, that was all no, cool. my fiance is a sleep talker and then like he'll make these random little noises and I'm like, what? He's like, oh, the goats, the goats got out. You, you have we the, don't have You goats. have the app where it records every time someone says something, right? I want to get it. My friend, my friend, Corinna, she has it and she shows it all the time. She posts it all the time. She, she says in the little night and it's insane. The I'm, shit sc- that- I'm a little scared it would catch my toots. Oh. Your your toots? Oh, yeah. it might, it might, yep, yeah, might catch that. Yeah, I haven't I haven't yeah. farted in front of him yet. So uh, Oh wow. Yeah. Well make sure engaged in never. Well, you make sure you have the app on your phone, not his phone. Okay. So I you can have control. it recorded, you hear it too, you delete it. That's an it. idea. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it separates all the audios. So if like you toot in the middle of the night, it puts its it, it puts its like own Okay. Line. I could get I could get with this. Yeah. This would be good. Yeah, but you'll you'll hear you'll hear everything. Oh my god. I would love to hear what he says because he's such a sleep talker. Yeah. It's I sleep so talk wild. too. It's it's terrible. It's so good. Okay, a couple more for us. This is seven days old, coming from Two Hot Takes subreddit, titled Dating an Escort. Awesome. I, 61 male, have been seeing this escort, 44 female, for many years. She's told me a few times in the past that she loves me. Mm. She's had a traumatic past being abandoned by her mom, having a kid when she was 15, and has been in abusive relationships. However... It appeared that she found her own as an escort and made a living from several repeat clients. She seems happy externally. However, she's told me a few times that her work is eating her up. However, she can't quit as she can't figure out another career that pays her bills. I've developed feelings for her, but unsure if one can have a real relationship with an escort. Anyone have experience? Watch the movie Pretty Woman. 
literally, it's giving Richard. I've Gere. actually never seen that. I've never seen that movie. That is a crime. So uh, good. I know. I know. Julia I know. Roberts. I've never Richard seen Gere. It. She was a she was an escort in that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh my god, it's such a good movie. And then they fell in love. Oh. All right, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it's it. It's so good. Okay. It's it's a like a cute rom com. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's a filmed it's a here. good wine night like. Like there you, you and Todd with a bottle of wine and like ordering some food <laughs> in. Todd, that's the only person I can watch it with. Just Todd. There you go. But yeah, all right, sounds you good. I'll it. watch it. I I feel like he's just trying to live life, have a good time. Love is love. Mm. I'm I'm like team love. I'm just like yeah. You try it. Give it a shot. I think try it out. Obviously, don't make any harsh decisions on both ends. Like, don't have her quit her job. Mm. Don't like. Okay, I have one very, in. very important question. He's saying he says he's he's been seeing her. Yeah, is that for him many years? Seeing her, seeing her, or paying her to see him? I think pay paying him. client. Yeah, I think it's only been a client, strictly service business. provider relationship. I mean, she says she loves him though. Girl, she loved the money. <laughs> but what if she really like? What if it was like he's her top client? Maybe. You're my favorite customer. Yeah. I did read another story recently that was from this um this person sharing I used to get massages regularly and the masseuse would let you pay for upgrades, which mm-hmm. was a happy ending. Yeah. But it turns out she um doesn't do the upgrade service anymore because she married one of her regulars and he doesn't want her doing upgrades anymore. So like wow. Sometimes people find their person in very Strange unusual places. methods. I could see Strange them like places. possibly falling in love, but if you're not hanging out outside of this, I feel like that's a little bit of a red flag, no? I wonder if they've hung out. Let me see if there's any comments. What what did OP say? What's OP? Uh original post. Oh, right? Original poster. Yeah. Original poster. So, OP responds to a comment. Yes, that's what I believe is. She's telling me what she thinks I want to hear. I only want to hear her reality. But the problem is she began this by telling me she loves me multiple times over a period of time. I didn't react at all for a good while. So I don't know. Maybe OP is kind of doubting if the Mm -hmm. I love you is real or not. Yeah. I've Now I've developed feelings for her, but her actions as I've spent more time with her lead me to be more confused of her actual motivation and intentions. More time with her while, while they're in session. Would you have any suggestions on how to elicit her real intentions? Go, uh, uh, go, uh, go out. Just ask? Yeah, just be like, hey, go like, out. obviously, like, we've been, like, seeing each other, you know, this type of way. Um, to be honest, like, I know we've been saying we love each other. Like, I genuinely mean that. And mm-hmm. I would like to, like, go out to dinner and actually hang out um, outside of, you know, work. The, yeah. Is usual he, encounter. He's 66 and she's 44? 60, yes. 60, ooh, 61. 61? 61, yeah. Oh. I'm surprised. I didn't think 61-year-old even went to, I read it. Okay. Oh, cool. they're... Yeah, boomers know. They know what's up. No, it's just it's just interesting. I like just can't imagine just 61-year-old yeah. going behind the computer like, hmm. Well, especially on my sub. Like, I'm kind of... Oh, this is on yours? This is on mine. Like, my sub is kind of sneaky. Oh. So he... He's in it. He's in it. Oh, so every single one we're listening... We're reading off their listening on this podcast? Most today have been from Two Hot Takes subreddit. Yeah. Cool. I know. But they, like, usually listen? hmm Oh, no! I thought... <laughs> I thought we were never I that they're we, not gonna hear our yeah, answers. Shit. No, it's good. We've we've been very we've been on it today. We're yeah. giving I feel like our responses have been really thoughtful. Exactly. Yeah. Something to consider with this too is OP does comment and say, I'm right now, I'm still contributing 70% of her monthly income. So it sounds like oh. it sounds like he's really kind of a pay pig in a sense sugar daddy type yeah and that would be hard because it's like she's kind of mentioning to him like i don't know what else i would do with my life and like he wants a relationship so it's like do you give someone an allowance so they stop having to do that or like do you help her find another job and then say hey let's go on a date see if we actually like each other outside of the the paying relationship like it would be a really tough conversation that is because if he's providing 70 percent when they start dating there's probably no services anymore, and that's seventy percent of her income. And then, so maybe she does really like him then, and that's why she's given up other clients. Exactly, mm. because she knows that he's not like. What is he going to pay for everything for her? I mean, that's not. 
yeah. what I'm thinking that she's thinking. But she has to think a little bit financially about this decision she's making. Yeah, there's another comment where OP says, we're not dating in the sense that she doesn't spend any time with me off the clock. So I don't know. I feel like my gut says she's not into it and she's, I, I, I feel like I side with Heath a little bit. I would say, hypothetically, if you're paying for an hour mm -hmm. and she's not hanging out after that hour just to spend genuinely, t like genuine time with you and to talk and hang out. Oh, that's good. That's a good way to tell. Mm -hmm. but oh, you say you love me so much, but as soon as that time hits an hour, you're gone. out the door. But I have a feeling she is spending longer than the hour. He said that, that they're not. I, no, no, I know, I know. But like, I think that time still counts as like part of like the, he's, I don't think he's paying for this session, but I think she is staying a little longer. And that's probably why he's like, oh, maybe she does like me because she's staying a little longer. It's still mm. technically during session It's just session has gone over, but he's not paying extra time for it. But he's also paying 70% of her income. Oof, we need a little bit more context here, OP. Come on. Okay. Let us know. You're going to hear it. You're going to oh, see it. I always say also go with your gut. I feel like deep down he knows what it really is. And mm -hmm. it's either one thing or it's the other. And sometimes it's hard to accept it if it's not the answer you want. But I feel like he probably knows if she actually loves him or if he feels like he's being. Yeah. I kind of want to have them both on the pod. Let's send him an invite. Have them, Talk it out. Have them come here and then he, the Heath and I will come back. I would love to facilitate like couples therapy. Not that I'm a qualified therapist by any means, but I do do that at some live shows. I ask people that are coming to the shows That's to cool. submit a problem they're having that has two sides. And then we'll, we'll go and talk to both of them and like hash it out. Oof, oh, wow. Yeah. One of, one of the biggest ones was um, this couple in Irvine. Love you guys. He got her a vacuum for her Valentine's Day gift. Beautiful gift. Vacuuming is the only chore that he had to do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was a really heated debate Dang, with everyone. Hey. He, he, he knew, like, he had to have thought that in his brain before he buying it. Like, he knew what he was doing. There's no way he didn't know. He really, I don't think it kind of just escaped him. Oh, you really think he didn't? Know? Yeah, he was so nice. He was like, I really thought it was, it wasn't that bad. I mean, if it was, if it was a Dyson, man. It was um a really nice Roomba, I believe. Okay. It was the one you plug into the, uh. That does it. It's the little, the, with the iPhone charger. Is that little <laughs> one? The cute one, the portable one. Uh, yeah. I will say for Valentine's Day, um, when I was living with my parents, I think I was in high school. My dad did get my mom a CD to a person that she had no idea who it was. And it was like his favorite country singer. Oh, so it was a gift for him. <laughs> and my mom was like, what the fuck is this? Why would you get me this? Oh my God. And uh, I just remember like, it, it was a really funny moment. Um, and then my dad took the CD and put it in his car. Um, <laughs> they're still married. They're doing great. Okay. So it's just like a funny little out. thing. But my mom was like, what is this? What the fuck? Okay, I'm giving you guys a choice on the last one. Okay. okay. We have had uh, quite a few weddings and engagement ones. It's the season with it. But I'm giving you an option because there is one that's not that. And I, I'm kind of now I've, I'm realizing making Zane here kind of sit through weddings and engagements and babies and, 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 breast, babies milk and breast and breast and hookers and escorts. So I'm going to let maybe we'll let you choose. OK. OK. So option one is, am I the asshole for not speaking Japanese after living here for six years? Option two Am I the asshole for giving my ex fiance a fake engagement ring? Ooh. And option three, am I the asshole for calling my brother a hypocrite for refusing to come to my wedding because it's child free? I like the second one. Door number two. Yeah, door number two. That is- Pick number three, my lord. That is, come on, that's exciting. <laughs> the other, the other, like the uh, first one, it's like, I, I already know where it's going. So mm. that one, the third one was just like, yeah, sure. No kids at a wedding. Yeah, we got it. But that. Okay. Fake fake wedding ring. Here we go. I need to hear this one. This is 13 hours old, coming from A-I-T-A-H, titled, Am I the asshole for giving my ex-fiance a fake engagement ring? Mm. It was an honest-to-God marriage proposal. I very much wanted to marry her. She is just a klutz, and I didn't trust her with the real thing. 
I took her to Coachella for the second weekend and to propose. It was a great time, and she got to see No Doubt, who she loves, because her dad used to listen with her when she was a baby. Wow. We were there, so yeah. it feels like so— saw it happen. Yeah. Anyways, I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. She loved the ring. I had it sized, but it was the brass and moissanite copy I had made so she would not lose or damage the real one at the concert, which she promptly did. And then she pretended not to. She said it was too tight and that she had put it away until we got back to Phoenix. When we got back, she asked me where I got the ring. I told her and she tried to replace it until they told her how much it cost. She came to my place crying to tell me she lost the ring and to beg for my forgiveness. I told her right away that it was no big deal because I had the real one with me and we could go get it sized perfectly so that she wouldn't lose it. Yeah, perfect. My mistake because mm. <laughs> she fucking lost it. She went off on me for making her not enjoy the weekend because she was worried sick that she had lost her ring. If she had told me she had lost it, I would have just told her the truth yeah. mm -hmm. that I didn't want to take any chances with her ring at that massive venue. She screamed at me that I was a complete asshole to make her worry like that. She said a lot of stuff that I guess had been building for a while, and she said things she could not take back. Oh. I told her to get out. She asked for her real ring. I said, nope. I am not marrying someone who thinks this is a way to behave towards me. I told her she had to leave or I would get the security guys to get her out. Ooh, she, is, she is only signed in as a guest, so it is not a big deal for me to get her out. I feel like I dodged a bullet. Yep, I was just about yeah. to say it. But also kind of feel bad that I didn't tell her at the concert that it was fake so she wouldn't worry. My parents are wondering why we broke up and I really don't know what to say. No, you, you can tell. I, I think that was definitely something uh, something up there. Something that was universe, a sign. Baby. That was a universe. Yeah. That was a moment that the universe created yep. as a test, and it wasn't even that crazy of a test. This is insane. Though. It, it yeah. was insane. It was for her to be upset with him for her losing a fake wedding ring is absolutely insane. And, and you and you didn't tell him that you lost it, so it's like he couldn't help you out in dude. any way. But you know what? You did lose that ring, and when it came down, you he, she lost it. She so he lost, was right. So he was right. Yeah. He was right. And he, he was, was justified. And it was just he was just doing it. For you in the end of the day, it's your ring and he didn't want you to lose it. It's very special. Which how thoughtful is that? Yeah. To get you, not only do you have a real one waiting for you at home, but he got you a fake copy so that you can have fun and not worry about yeah. it. Be carefree. Went out of his way to do a fake one. That's uh, spent more money to make Extra a fake ring. Extra money. Extra money. Moissanite's like, yeah, they're less than diamonds, but like you still have to spend yeah, a decent it's, amount yeah, it's for money. a Moissanite. Like- Wow. I mean, yeah. Um, I think that was a sign. And uh, yeah, as you said, you definitely dodged a bullet on that one. Um, 100%. And especially the reaction you got. I feel bad. I feel bad you got that reaction and you were gaslit. That's tough. Like, especially, he was probably in like, he had, he was on his honeymoon stage at this point. Like, he yeah. was so excited for her and like that. Instead of her being relieved that it was a fake one and that the real one was safe and okay and that, you know, there is nothing to worry about. It was just blame. That that's bad. Um, yeah, that sucks. I just have a feeling that she, he um, bought her Coachella ticket too. It's giving. It, it's it, it's it, giving free ride. Yeah, it's it's giving. Yeah, it's giving gold digger. And then, and then wanting the, the ring yes, after that. You just told this person despicable things. You're done. He told you to get yeah. out and you ask for the ring. No You're not way. engaged anymore, sweetie. That's not yours. You're supposed to give the ring back if you call it off, right? Yes, unless you propose on holidays. Like if you propose on Valentine's Day or Christmas, it can technically be perceived as a gift and therefore oh. doesn't have oh, like to be given back. Oh, like you mean like legal wise? Yes. Oh, did yeah. not know that. So if there's Whoa. a shot that your engagement isn't going to work out, do not propose on a holiday because otherwise you're not entitled to getting the ring back. Ladies, try to get that get that ring on that Valentine's Day, baby. <laughs> Mariah, like, make it work. <laughs> Mariah, like, I got a Thanksgiving gift. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Was it Black Friday? It, I was just on Thanksgiving. It was on Thanksgiving. Uh, it counts. It's a gift. <laughs> That's so funny. Isn't that wild? I did not wild? know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen on Good legal advice. I know. It's That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. People are like kind of 
coming for him in the comments a little bit. Really? The, well, only in regards to you should have told her way sooner. No. And OP goes, I told her within seconds of finding out she lost it. How much quicker should I have let her know? And uh, the person goes, sorry, I meant after you proposed. I don't know. Maybe that's just kind of my relationship. And also, you have to think about it. It's another surprise he was probably trying to do when, when they got home. Maybe, like, yeah. By the way, here's the real wedding ring. Wedding ring or it. I will say this. Um, we don't know exactly how long he had planned to hold the real one. Because mm. he went into it knowing that she was kind of clumsy with belongings. And he was probably going to do it and let her hold that fake one until she did eventually lose it. Maybe. Because that's what it seems like to me. Well, no, he said that he proposed to her at Coachella. Right. Which, like, that is the Co place Coach to use Coach a fake ring. Coachella just happened. No, I know. I'm saying he could have let her wear that fake ring until she did eventually lose it because uh, he had already gone into it thinking that it was going to get lost. Yeah. And to keep uh, the backup for when that does happen. Yeah. So it didn't seem like he was going to go about and tell her that, hey, by the way, that's a fake one. I'm trying to see if there's any comments giving us info about when he was going to give her the real one and kind of share the info. Holy shit, you guys. What do you someone, got? Someone accuses him of tricking her, like you tricked her. And he goes, trick her how? I had the real $17,000 ring at home for her. It wasn't like a placeholder was all she was ever getting. Thank mm. God he didn't give her the real one. Damn. Wow. Wow. <sighs> $17,000 ring. That's Imagine way... finding a $17,000 ring at Coachella. Dude. Oof. I lost a Cartier ring down here on Ventura Boulevard somewhere. Really? Oh, no. Slipped off my finger after freshly applied hand sanitizer from Lululemon. <sighs> Fucking Gone. Lululemon. Gone. Yeah, now I got, I got another one. and This time I put spikes on it. On the inside? You, yeah. You do, what do you mean spikes? Yeah. You can do that? Yeah, I'll show you. Is it just like... It's teeth. You can put teeth on the inside of your rings and then it keeps it on there. See that? You can feel it if you want. Oh, it's a little I warm I see. on my, my hand. Do you feel the spikes? Like it doesn't ride up your hand? No, it just like it holds it in place. It like does give you a little mark, but like... It's, it's, it's not worth, going, worth it. It's Keep not it more going secure. anywhere. Worth it. So... I don't know. I I don't feel like he did anything wrong. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. I would crazy. love to meet the both of them. I would love to meet them. Like these stories, just it's just, I vibe. hate that I don't like see a mm -hmm. face to it. I don't see. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm on like Maury. 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 Jerry Springer a little bit. Yeah. It's every week for me. Damn, you guys nice. can come back whenever. All right, cool. Okay. You're welcome anytime. Nice. Top comment on this one. LOL, I like how after she did all of that, she asked you for the real ring. Mm. Not the asshole. Yeah, not. And OP does go, like, he. there's a lot of comments from him in these this thread. Um, there was no I told you so. I thought she would actually be relieved, not yeah. a psycho. I didn't know she lost the ring at Coachella. I thought she just genuinely put it away like she told me. The minute I realized she lost the ring, I did my best to reassure her it was no big deal and told her it was a placeholder. So I don't think asshole, like blessing mm -hmm. in disguise all the way around. It doesn't look like there's any updates, but yeah. It's almost like she Easy. wanted to lose that real, like she was like, I just can't like, I can't wrap Maybe. my head around why she would be upset. Like you would have lost a $17,000 ring. Yeah. Maybe she wanted to pawn that fake one Ooh. thinking it was real. He, it's giving free Coachella trip, $17,000 ring. Like maybe she's got that sugar baby mentality mm. a little bit. I don't know. Like to ask for that ring yeah. after you are breaking what? up. How, does she, how did she know weird. it was fake? He uh, eventually did tell her that was a fake placeholder. I have the real one. I had a feeling she already knew. You think so? I don't know. Hmm. I'm so curious. We need more OP. But why would she come back and be like, where'd you buy it from? It's almost I, like, why mm. is that like coming out of nowhere? Where'd you buy it from? That I thought because it was like, she was trying to sneakily replace it on her own. And then when she went to the store thinking it was like, they told her, oh, that's 17 grand. She freaked out crying. But at that point, wouldn't you kind of be like, well, why are you, why is she asking me where I got it from? And also, why are you telling her where you got the real one from 
knowing she wasn't wearing the real one. Mm. Mm. You know? Yeah. Tell her where you got the fake uh, one from. Exactly. Moy's Night. Five, five carats. Well, they don't do carats for Moy's Night. It was an eight by 10 millimeter. It was a six by 10. How much did those cost? It depends. There's a lot of, like, I feel like there's a big movement for Moy's Night right now. Hmm. Um, it's pretty affordable. I went with Moy's Night. I love it. Oh, like, like a, for the real wedding ring? For my engagement ring, it's Moy's Night. You'd never know. I just, I, but like, what's the difference in price? Like, I don't Price, yeah. huge, huge oh, difference. Oh, really? Yeah, like this, like in an actual diamond, anywhere from 40 to 60K for the size. Wow. That's just, that's. Yeah. I'm that's not, like the savings? I'm not doing that. No, that's how much a diamond that's that size would be. what a diamond this size would be. Wow. It's like the prices of diamonds. It's they're, crazy. They're astronomical. Yeah. I yeah. don't think it's worth it. Just like, and and if you lose it, like, you know, hopefully God, you you lose it. You, you just replace it with another Moissanite, but it's not $60,000 that you're fucking replacing. Yeah. It's, yeah, no. To each their own. Like if you have the go fuck you money or whatever, sure, like yeah. you want to spend 200K on a ring. Like there's some people that like Victoria Beckham, she's got one of her rings. She has 15 engagement rings, by the way. One of them is over a million dollars. So like they can obviously do that, but like, I I would rather buy a horse than a a, a horse like, a million dollar horse. Well, like you know, just like sea a, 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 yeah. a budget friendly horse, like a good horse. Yeah, like a really fast horse. Yeah, I just bought one. How much is a good horse? Mm, you can get a good one for I think depends on where you live. Horse prices have actually gone through the roof lately. There's too. inflation uh, on horses. Oh yeah, and like they, I they think, get everything. I think you can get a good good one. Well trained, broke, good head on him. Ten grand. Mm. Oh, okay. For, mm. for uh, uh, like a baby? No, like a trained older one. Okay. Like six, seven, eight. What's the lifespan? Thirty years. Wow. Yeah, it's a commitment. Wow, you can grow up with him. I still have my pony from when I was five. Really? Yeah. That's cool. He's a little cutie. What's his name? Konya. Konya. He was named after cognac, the liquor. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Loose, loosely. Okay. But thank you guys so much for coming on. Of course. Wow, that thank was you great. for having us. Where can everyone find you guys, listen to your show? Um, So we have two shows. Uh, one is Popping a brand, off. brand new show that we just uh, started with Alicia Marie and Remy Cruz. Um, it's called Basically Unfiltered. We had to change it a couple weeks ago. Oh, no. Legalities. Yeah, Legalities. No. Basically Unfiltered. Uh, we post every Thursday on YouTube.com slash pretty X unfiltered right now. We have to switch it later. And then we have our show that we've been doing for five years called Zane and Heath Unfilter. We post every Tuesdays on our channel, youtube.com slash Zane and Heath. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a It's a good time. It's a, you know, a podcast with two uneducated Florida boys. Yeah, don't change it. It's so we'll good. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. It's so good. And thank but you again for having us. This, this was, was great. This was really good. I can't Amazing. believe how, like, I, you just want more. I you know? know. It's literally, that is why I started this podcast. It just sucks you in. It does. And, and then when you get like the little updates, oof. oof. And you'll never oof. stop either. There's always going to be problems around the world and you'll always, always have them. Always. That's, That's nice. why we're here every week. Damn. Fuck. All of Zane and Heath's links will be in the description of the podcast. Check out their show. It is hilarious, fun. You're just having a good time. Thank you. Thank just you. having a good time. I'm going to start I'm gonna start submitting on your little subreddit. We should. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I have a problem with anybody. Oh my God. I'm going to have to question. Hey, so, so I have a podcast host <laughs> that- uh, <laughs> Just very specific. He's, he's getting married and I feel like he's at a different stage of life than me and he's Tennessee. moving to Chattanooga. Who's, who's moving to- uh, That's funny. That's oh really funny. Oh my God. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.